back in my day, television was called books. And because televisions were called books, this episode is sponsored by Sonomia, the world of dreams by John Faria. Uh, Sonomia is a story about a boy who has, gets very, very, very bad uh, news from his parents and ends up in this dream world where he has to battle his way past some crazy looking spider snake people. Let's see, I think I had the picture a second ago. <gasps> Ooh, there it is. It's crazy little spider snake people. Uh, and a bunch of other monsters and meet some wizards, some witches, some little knights and everything. And he has to battle his way back and save his dream world before it is taken over by this monster named Reckon. Now, this book is good for kids of all ages, and from what I understand, you could read this in one sitting with them, and it's perfectly fine. Oh, there goes Reckon. For anybody who is trying to talk to their kids about depression, uh, maybe talk to their kids about divorce or something like that, this is a very good book to get uh, that to get them through it a little bit, I guess, I suppose. Hmm? Uh, you can find this on Amazon and, of course, your libraries. Uh, so, let's get to the episode. Hello everyone and welcome to Toy Fathers. This is your Mad Cat Lynx and uh, we're going to be going over some of the first wave of Princess Bride figures today. Uh, for those of people who know me, they know I love the Princess Bride. It is by far one of my favorite movies of all time. It has everything that you like, action, adventure, sword fighting, suspense, rocks being thrown at people, true love, miracles. Yeah, I know I'm misquoting. It's okay, all right? I want to see who remembers that. But I do know all of these figures, and we will be talking about them. Uh, of course, uh, Todd McFarlane's company made them, so I'm sure that the, the looks of them are going to be great. Let's see how the articulation and everything else fares. All right, all right everyone. So our first figure that we're going to be looking at is the Dread Pirate Roberts, the Princess Bride. Uh, since this is my actual first video, yes, those are Legos that is holding up the background. Okay, so... Dread Pirate Roberts. He is one of my favorite characters of the movie, even though I prefer Nico Montoya. Inconceivable! That is just what it is. Let's look at the casing. So the pure window in the front. You can see everything that's going on, even though there's not much. There's not many accessories. The swords, for some reason, have been coming out very warped. Uh, a little bit of hot water could fix that off top of course age mcfarland's logo at the top on the side you got that beautiful picture of buttercup and wesley and the back this is all the first wave of course dread pirate roberts uh, buttercup fezzik and inigo Montoya. i really wish they would have done these with the pictures of the characters and the figures next to them because that would have been a lot better i in my opinion i want to see the the figures i'm going to be ordering uh, 22 parts. Um, just standard stuff right now. Okay. Bottom. Standard information at the bottom. The other side. Just the name. Drug Pirate Roberts. It would have been nice to have seen a Drug Pirate Roberts picture on the side maybe. As you wish. Because the top is just plain. Princess Pride. Uh, for this unboxing, of course, let me get out. My case killer. Inconceivable. Oh, 
Always make sure that you close the knife properly. As you wish. Do this full unboxing. All right, I got the figure and doesn't seem like the background fully comes out, but there is a stand there. Hmm. Oh, there it goes. It's got to use a little force. Push that to the side. This, I am not feeling whatsoever. I do not like that they stuck it to the back like this. Because now I'm going to have to either peel it off or cut it out. And I'm not going to be able to use the background. I would have liked to have used that background for the figure. To display the figure. Now that's not possible. And here he is everybody. Wesley the Dread Pirate Roberts. Not using his accessory right now, but I mean, it's a gorgeous looking figure that I could say hands down. The detailing that McFarlane puts in his figures is amazing. It always has been and I think it always will be. There are a little bit of things here and there that are a little different from what I remember from the movie. As I was saying, there are certain things that are a little bit different. Uh, one is, I don't remember Wesley having this much of a beard. And you could kind of see the paint lines on it and everything else, especially when he's looking up. You could see underneath, there's a lot of those paint lines. Uh, this part looks like a mole, I don't understand why. All in all, like even his armor and everything else around, you could see the, the black chain mail that he had underneath. Those are really good touches. I'll get to the accessories and I'll get to the scabbard in a moment. Right now, let's look at some of the articulation. So his head, of course, left, left, right, slightly up. I wish it would go a little bit more up. Uh, I, we definitely are not going to be able to get him from the Cliffs of Insanity to look up. It's not going to happen. Okay. Right. I guess he's going to have to trust the Spaniards now. His shoulders are on multiple. There's actually multiple joints on his shoulders alone. Okay, he has the regular left, right, up, down. You could spin his arm all around if you want. Uh, he has the... It looks like it's one of those pec joints, but it's not. It's not going in the direction that you want it to for a pec, kind of. This one does more than his left-hand side. Um, does he have a bicep? He does have bicep swivel. He has one... Very difficult elbow joint. I don't want to force that too much. But as you can see, it's mostly for clothes. One thing that McFarlane does is he thinks about the way that a figure looks as opposed to the articulation for the figure. They make great looking statues as opposed to, you know, playable figures, playable toys. His hand, he does have the wrists. He can turn the wrists, so he has... That much range is goes all the way back. It doesn't really go all the way forward, but it definitely goes all the way back with his hands. Okay. That's his left arm. Now, his right arm is pretty much the same thing, especially when it comes to the elbow. It's very uh, difficult. You can move it. It has more. Does it have more range? It has more range than the left hand. Left hand, you only get a little bit, but the right hand... The right elbow, you could get a lot more. Which is good, because that's one of his uh, sword fighting hands, sword fighting arms. That's the best one. Waist. You could turn it. 
It goes slightly back and slightly forward at the waist. It doesn't do too much of the torso bending. There's no, uh, no hip that I could see. I don't see any hip. There's no hip movement, only the waist. His legs, he could do a full split. Perfectly fine. He could bend it forward, bend it back slightly. His buttocks does get in the way of bending back, so be careful with that. All right, This isn't Pilates. Knees, he has double hinged knees. So it could go all the way back. He could hit his buttocks. And probably the only time where McFarlane uh, doesn't mind too much about the art, uh, about the aesthetics versus the articulation is at the uh, is at the ankle. So he could fully spin that foot. And one thing I love, I love a nice good toe joint. This is not this is the. Toys don't do this enough. You need some toes, people. We need toes. All in all, I like this figure. I really do. I like the way that his hands moves and everything else. Now, let's go to the accessories. So, the sword, I already mentioned when it's in the case. Look at how bent it is. It's pointing in a total opposite direction than what I really want it to. I want it to go a little straighter. I can bend it slightly to try to get that. Now, it's supposed to be able to go into the scabbard. I have not been able to get it all the way in because the scabbard itself also is bent. And the inside of it, it's not going to be able to get the sword all the way in. His hand, getting the sword onto his hand is not that difficult. Just slide it right in, and it pretty much holds. And the hand will hold it. The hand will hold the sword perfectly fine. You don't have to worry too much about it. All right. Done. Posing him will be easy to do once you get the right motion, once you get the right movement. And he's going to stick that way. These joints are very stiff. So the moment that you pose him, he's not going to move out of it. The question is, are you going to be able to do the full posing that you want, especially with uh, other figures like Inigo Montoya? And at the last uh, episode of this series, I'm going to be showing you exactly what kind of poses I will do with all of the figures, especially together, Inigo Montoya, Fezzik, and everybody else. All in all... I'm glad that they're making these figures. I always wanted a Princess Bride set. They look phenomenal. Let's see about the height. Can I put these with all my other figures? Let's get out the ruler right here. The Dread Pirate Roberts stands at almost seven and a half inches. Seven and a half inches. That is... About, I want to say 19, yeah, like 18, 19 uh, centimeters, for those of you who do not use inches. It's pretty okay for, for it to be used with my Marvel Legends and everything else. Am I going to? Probably not. I'm going to put this on the shelf with the other uh, Princess Bride figures. So, it is what it is. I love... That they're doing this. I can't wait to see what other figures they come from the uh, from the movie. I would love to see Miracle Max. That would be that would be awesome. And his wife. Ugh. But we gotta wait and see. Alright, until next time, have a good one. As you wish.